and welcome to Hope Elam Church. We are so glad that you joined us. We are in just a moment going to be hearing the sermon from Sunday, um, but before we get to that, please go ahead and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Uh, give us a thumbs up and let's get ready to go and hear this powerful word. We hope that it blesses you the way that God desires to bless you. Let's go. Let our hearts say amen. 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 There is a sweet spirit in this place. And I am so glad that the preaching moment is not about me. I am so encouraged because God is so faithful. He will do what he said he would do. Amen. Come on, Brandon. Yes, sir. Let's go. Uh, even, when, even when we will attempt to come in and chill and maybe even to kind of hide, maybe even to be present but not show anybody all of our hurt, maybe even be in a place where we're present but we're thinking about what's coming, God still will meet us exactly where we are. The kind of God that we serve, he don't make mistakes. And if you're here today, and if you are just willing to be open and available and let the Spirit of God have its way, I promise God will do his part. So as we come into these doors, I'm just thinking about how blessed we are. And I'm going to take my time because there's a lot to share. But I promise you, it, if we're just open, God will be faithful and he will speak a word to your hearts. Amen? Amen. I'm just, um, I'm overwhelmed by the faithfulness of God. Let us pray, God. We thank you and we welcome you into this place. Even now, there might be one, Father, who is distracted, um, focused on something, oh God, that um, is driving, drawing them away. Father, I pray now that you would quicken our hearts, quicken our minds, quicken our spirits to be present and available. God, we thank you, O oh God, because you have ordained this hour. And I pray, God, that you would hide me behind the cross. For the preaching of the gospel is to some foolishness, but unto those who are saved, it's the power of God. God, we need you so much. God, even in our brokenness, God, even in our bitterness, God, even in the space and the place, God, that we've tucked away, God, would you stir us up? God, would you work in and through and reach beyond, God, our, um, reach beyond our hurt and meet every need? We love you today. And we pray now, God, that you would speak a rhema word, and we love you. In Jesus' name. Vars, amen? amen? Amen. Let's go. Amen. So, um, you know, we are in this new series, Corinthians, Christianity, and Us. And um, I just want you to know, Hope Elam, that God is calling all of us to a space and a place to where we don't come to have church, that we come to get help for where we are. Amen? And so, and with that, um, I want to challenge us a little bit today with the Word of God. And so here's what we're going to talk about. We're going to run the race to win. And I know you might be here right now thinking, well, I haven't run a race in a long time. In fact, my knees won't let me run the way I used to run, and I've got a little bit more weight than I used to have. But I'll stop by to tell somebody, it don't matter where you've been, where you're from, how much your diet has been, but the race I'm talking about is the race for your life. And when we run this race, Lauren, we run it to win. Amen? Just so I'm, I'm aware, where are, if you consider yourself an athlete, could you just wave at me? Wait, wait, keep waving. All the athletes. I see oh, a bunch of athletes over there. All right, well, if you're a former athlete, can you wave at me? Where are my former athletes? Ooh. If you're a non-athlete, can you wave? Let me see who you are. Oh, look at all those hands. Well, well, you're going to learn today. <laughs> Listen, seriously, um, we all have a race to run. And it does, listen, it does not matter how athletic you are. What I'm talking about is a race for our 
lives. And the main thing I want you to know, you're going to hear me say this 5,000 times, compete. We're going to get to where we're going, but what I want you to know and understand, as a child of God, no matter what life has thrown at you, no matter how bad things have been, compete. Strive. Keep going. Understand this, that there is going to be tons of things that's going to make us tired, many things that's going to make us want to quit, many diagnoses that's not going to be in our favor, many people who's going to hurt our hearts, many things going to give us a headache, many things that's going to break our hearts. Keep going. Life is too precious. Compete. Too many times as the people of God, we sit down on our problems, we sit down on our issues, we sit down on our past. And instead of running the race to win, we're running the race so that we might catch up with other people, catch up with the Joneses, get the things that they got, have the things that they have, and none of it will be a prize that will last. None of it. So today, I'm saying compete. If you hear nothing else, fight. There's no way we can be a child of God and let the enemy come and attack and do all he's going to do, and we sit down. We're not created to sit down. Fight. Maintain, compete, strive, keep going. I think Paul was some type of an athlete because he talks about he talks about shadow boxing, he talks about engaging, wrestling, he talks about running. Engage. As the people of God, if you've been here and you're saying, Pastor Brown, you don't know how long I've been fighting. You don't know how long I've been running, trying to do this thing. You don't know how long I've been striving. I've been calling on the name of the Lord. I've been coming to church. I've been getting to those small groups. I've been doing all those things. Keep going. Compete. Contend for the faith. That's what we're called to do. I'm saying be in the running when it's all said and done. When everything has has passed away, will you keep going? Maybe you're here today and you're thinking, look, I'm tired. I'll stop by to tell you, look, compete. What am I talking about? In the ver- look, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to settle in in verses 24 through 27. In our reading, I, I might touch upon the first beginning parts of the reading, but where I'm going to settle in is verses 24 through 27. Run the race to win. Don't you realize that in a race, everybody runs? Listen, no matter who you are, whether you are considered a child of God, whether you've accepted Christ or not, don't you know that God says that you belong to him? And none of us, none of us deserve to be in the race. He has given us free entry by Jesus dying at Calvary. Now we get the privilege of running this race. The least we can do is compete. Fight, wrestle with the situation. Whatever you've given up on, pick it back up. Pray and ask God, God, what do you want me to do? How can I strive a little bit more? How can I keep going? Don't you realize that everybody's racing, but only one person get the prize? Uh, When I was with the Drake Relays, plenty of racists, and there was only one champion. And they would run and they would grind. They would spend all their time training and preparing themselves for that race. And the race and the prize that they would get was a corruptible crown or something that would perish. But what we're racing for, no one can take away. So compete. So run to win. So what am I talking about? Well, and by the way, I'm going to give you a lot of scriptures. And I'm going to take my time. Because the enemy is going to attack the moment we take a a, a breather, the moment we take some time off, the moment we shut it down, he's coming. And he comes to kill, steal, and destroy, to kill our dreams, destroy our families, to take away all the things, that all the progress you've made in your relationship with an almighty God. He wants you to think one thing is going to make you start all over again. He's a liar. So I'm saying we got to run to win. The first thing I want you to understand, we are... It says in in Philippians 3, Paul says, I'm forgetting about all the things that I've I've done. I've done some great things. Kian, I've done some things, and that's cool, but I've not arrived. I've not achieved. I'm not all that. Paul says, I'm forgetting those things that are behind. 
And I'm striving, I'm pressing, I'm going to keep going to accomplish the thing, the prize that is set before me. So I don't know who it is. Maybe right from the jump, I'm saying, press on. You've been pressing, you've been pushing, you've been going, and you're tired. I'm saying, keep going. As a child of God, we have to compete. Press on. In Hebrews 12, 1, the writer says, we are surrounded by a cloud of witnesses, like right here, right now, sitting beside you. There are folks that God has made some miraculous signs in their lives. You know for yourself that God has been good. He snatched you out of that situation. He put his hands above your mama and your daddy. He kept you when you couldn't keep yourself. We're surrounded by all kind of a cloud of witnesses. And we know he's able to do what he said he's going to do. We're surrounded by it. So oftentimes he says, look, lay aside that thing. You know what it is. The thing that trips you up. The thing that you know you try to press it down and it keeps drawing you. The thing that keeps calling you. The thing that you keep working on. And now you're so tired because it seems like it keeps tripping you up and you can't seem to win. You do win if you keep going. Fight. Get back up. Keep going. He says, lay aside that thing and run the race with endurance that is set before you. Run your race. Run the one that God has set out for you. Your race may not be like my race. Run your race. Run your pace. Don't have to run to try to keep up with people. Run. Get back up. Keep going and fight. Compete. We're talking about the race for your life. I know it's a metaphor for an athlete. I know it seems like, oh, well, we're running. No, every day we got to compete. It says in Galatians 6, 9, he said, don't be weary in your well-doing. I know you've been serving. I know you've been giving of yourself. I know you've been trying to compete, and you have been. Keep going. Don't quit. Now is not the time to give in. Wherever you are in your life, wherever you think you've gotten to a place to where now you hit a wall, climb that wall, go around the wall, keep going. Our life depends on it. People who run races in this world, there's only one champion, and they run to win. But don't you know as the children of God that we all run, but if we don't quit and we run as well as we can, that we're victorious, that if you get to the end of your course and you don't give in, do you know you're going to receive a prize? Do you understand the importance of not quitting and keep going? But we don't run as if we're going to get a, a participation ribbon. We run like we're going to win the gold medal. We press. We keep going. We don't quit. We compete. Amen? Amen. So now, why is all of this important? Because there's a competition whether you like it or not. There is. There is an opposition. There is someone who's opposing you and opposing me every day. Every day there is an adversary. There is a rival. There's someone who can't stand us. So whether we like it or not, there is a competition, and it's over our life. So I'm saying compete. We don't compete with each other. I know it seems like, well, it's your boss or it's your coworker or it's your husband or your wife. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. The enemy might come in and use somebody to bring some heartache and some pain, but we wrestle not against flesh and blood. You are not my enemy. I am not your enemy. Who we, who's the enemy? Satan, spiritual wickedness. We wrestle not against flesh and blood but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in the dark world, and against evil spirits in heavenly places. You know who we fight against a lot? It's things of this world. That we take our identity based upon what we have or what we don't have. That we tend to fight each other because Truth be told, we're checking out what each person have, and we don't mind people doing well, just not better than ourselves. 
And so it's a problem with it. We want the things of this world. But we are reminded, you are not my enemy. We're not wrestling against it. We have an enemy to fight, but you are not it. Amen? Amen. So, Jesus says, Simon, Simon, talking about the enemy, Satan desires to sift you and sift you all like wheat. He wants to separate you. He wants to divide you. He wants to use deception. He wants to keep us separated. He wants to kill, steal, and destroy. That's his goal. And he's a worthy adversary. But that's what he wants. But wait. Jesus said, but I have pleaded in prayer for you, Simon. I've pleaded for you, Andrew. I've pleaded for you, Rob. I've been praying for you, John. He said, listen, if you should fall, he said, I'm praying that you fail not, that your faith fail not. But if you should fall, when you have repented and turned back again, listen, maybe you're here. You're not where you want to be. You didn't do what you wanted to do. Your fleshly nature got the best of it. Do you know sin is a missed mark? That you don't have to go all the way down? That you missed a step and you can get back up? Like right here? I'm saying today. Turn. Turn back. Compete. Get up. Keep fighting. Keep engaging. Turn back. You don't have to go that way. Turn now. Fight. He says, look, now watch. And I know it seems personal that when we run this race, like I got to run my race, you got to run yours. But here's where I'm going to tie in the beginning verses that we read. Paul says, look, when you have turned again, he says, then go strengthen your brothers. Paul was a winner. Paul understood Self-control. That's why I think he was an athlete. He understood discipline. Because Paul understood that when I was with the Jews, he said, I did what the Jews did. He said, I had the understanding about, you know, it's not the meat that they eat. Because anything that enters the belly goes out in the trough. I have enough maturity to understand it wasn't the meat. But when I was with the Jews, I did what the Jews did. And when I was with the Gentiles, I did what the Gentiles did. I kept the, obey, the commandments of the Lord. I wasn't playing there, but, but I didn't let the things that didn't matter be a stumbling block. When I was with those who was weak, I became weak. Why? Because Paul wanted to win over all those of us who might be in a place that is not where he was. He wanted to win the prize. He wanted all of us to make it in. So what I'm saying is, it's not just for you. It's for all of us. All of us run the race. All of us can get the prize. So run to win. Run, compete. When we leave this place, okay, put your hands up. Everybody put your hands up. Everybody put your hands up. In the name of Jesus, put your hands up. (laughs) So all I'm saying is, if you are with somebody, somebody's walking with you, just, you don't have to say anything. Just put your hands up. And when you see that, fight. Whatever you're dealing with, fight. Get back up. Keep going. Fight. The competition. So James 4. James 4 is very interesting. If you look at the first few verses of James 4, James 4 says, look, I know why you're quarreling. I know why you're fighting each other. Because somebody has something that you want, and you don't have it. And so you plot and you scheme trying to get it, but you can't get it. And the thing that you don't know, you have not because you ask not. And when you do ask, you ask with the wrong motives. And because your motives are not good, you can't get what it is you're asking for. Then he comes to this verse and he says, look, don't you realize that the friendship with the world makes you an enemy of God? It was so nice he said it twice. He said, and I say it again, if you want to be a friend of the world, you make yourself an enemy of God. Seek ye first the kingdom and his righteousness and all that we have need. He's going to give us what we need and stop going after the things of this world. Compete. There is a competition. All right. Now, Paul said, fight the good fight. Fight the good fight 
of faith. Contend for the faith. Contend. Fight for the faith. Like when you start to doubt, when you start to like get hit, when life starts to pressing down, but you have the foundational truth about who you believe. You got to believe who God says that you are, not what you've done, not what the world says you are. You got to believe that you are who he says you are. Contend for the faith. We can't be, listen, 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 as the people of God, those believers in Jesus Christ, listen, sometimes we're caught up between grace and mercy and we still have no gratitude. And what I'm saying to all of us, fight. Get back up. Know who you are. Know the foundations of your faith. Know that it's not about you as everything is about him. And keep going. Run your race. Compete. All right. The weapons that we fight with, they're not worldly. The things that we, he says, the weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, do you know how powerful you are? And I know you might be sitting here like, Psh, not me. Yeah, you. Yeah, us. Because we're heirs and joint heirs. He says, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. Did you know you can do that? He says, we demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. He says, and we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. So what are you thinking about? And I'm saying, Ashley, at the thought, at the moment, a thought that is a negative thought, something that is not of God. We capture that thing, we crucify that thing, we replace it with something that is of God. That every thought, everything, we, we use the, the, the power of God through the Holy Spirit, and we stop that thing. If you consider it long enough, guess what you're going to do? You're going to keep doing it. What are you thinking about? Compete. Cast it down. That's where the enemy comes in. Amen? All right. So why do we need to compete? Because there's a crown. And before we get sidetracked about the crown, this is not some royal deity thing that we're going to put on our heads. The crown that we're talking about, when they... When they pressed and competed for a crown back then, they were competing for a corruptible, perishable crown. They were competing for a wreath. They were competing for um, something that was made of leaves that was a crown. It sat upon their heads, but it was perishable. It was a victor's crown. And the victor's crown wasn't so much in the thing it was what it meant. It meant that if you were the champion, that you were so proud of the endurance, the discipline. You were so proud of the self-control. You were so proud of your diet and your nutrition. You know what it took to get there. And then because of the crown, that's what you were so proud about. Compete for the crown of life. The fact that you grind, the fact that you kept fighting. So I don't know who I'm talking to, but there is a crown. He talks about it. He said, listen, and by the way, in the NLT, it talks about a prize. And because I was using the competition, I wanted to use the crown, so I went to the NIV. And the NIV says the same thing for everyone who competes in the games, goes into strict training. They do not get a crown that will not last, but we do get a crown that will last forever. So can I talk about the crown? Jesus. God blesses those who patiently endure testing and temptation. That if you endure to the end, he said, you're going to get a crown of life. That, that what you get from enduring is the patience, the hope, the character, what God gives you. That you have this crown of life. That he gives us this eternal life. That's what we're competing after, not some gold or silver. We're talking about committing and enduring every test. What are you going through right now? What is the test? What is the thing that you want to give up? And I'm saying, we didn't have any kind of entry into this race, but now we're here. Compete, and we get a crown that shall last forever. Compete for your crown. Commit the crown. And now it says in 2 Timothy, this is uh, 
Timothy talking about him and Paul. He says to the church at Thessalonica, it says that now the prize awaits me. He says, this is, this is Paul says, the crown of righteousness. Paul is very close. This is Paul talking, not Timothy. Paul is very close to decapitation. He's near death. He's in a Roman prison. But yeah, he's talking about he's near the crown of righteousness. And all I'm saying, whatever you're going through, keep going. It's worth it. It's worth it. Says uh, in 1 Peter, the people that God puts in your life, the people that he's put for you to have an influence on, don't lord over them. Like, you know, well, I'm a Christian. You know, I go to Hope Elam. And, you know, we, we, we doing the whole Holy Bible for a year. And, you know, I can quote the scripture, uh, oh, create in me a pure heart and, you know, oh, God, and renew a pure spirit and a steadfast spirit within me. So, so, so who are you? No. He says, live by example that as we work and live with other people, live our lives as we can endure and make it to the end, and they can too. It says, look, when the shepherd appears, you will receive a crown of never-ending glory and honor. Amen? Amen. We're going to keep pressing because we got to win this race. Commit. Now, this is, this is Timothy. Timothy says about him and Paul, he said, we want it very much to come to you. You and I, me and Paul. And we tried again and again, but Satan prevented us. He said, after all, what gives us hope and joy and what will be our proud reward and crown as we stand before our Lord Jesus? Like, what's going to be you? Timothy says, you Thessalonica, you Hope Elam, you're the crown. You're the joy and the hope, as the preachers were saying. The fact that you make it, that's our crown. Because when you make it, we make it. When I make it, we make it. So we're in this together. We're running our individual race, but all of us can receive the prize. Amen? Amen. Amen. Not only is there a competition that we must compete, and not only is there a crown that we must commit, but we need to run with confidence. Confidence. Run, he says, in our text. Paul says, I run with purpose in every step. He said, I'm not just out here shadow boxing. And he said, I'm engaging. There's combat. Every day there's something the enemy is trying to take me out. But I run, I run with confidence because of my experience, because I heard what you went through. And if he did it for you, he can do it for me. I look back over my life and I wonder, like, how am I going to make it over? Well, if he did it then, he can do it now. I run with confidence in the God that I serve. Keep running with confidence. Amen? Listen, discipline and self-control. My wife is sitting up there. She made the, okay, she made the Olympic team, got a silver medal. woo cool. But I watch. I watch Natasha train for a long time, and she did the same things all the time. She was able to always finish her workout as a 400-meter runner and run through the line every time. She didn't get close, tired, and kind of, she ran through the line. When I watched her make the Olympic team in New Orleans in 1992, she was in sixth place coming with 40 meters left. And as most runners started to get close, they saw the prize. She just kept going because that's the way she trained, passed about three or four and made the Olympic team, and then, again, made the the Olympics and got the silver. Yes. Seriously, though, because she was doing it all the time and the training was like that, then she knew what, that's just what she did. So what I'm saying, you run with confidence when you have heels, drills, and thrills. The heels, we used to work, run heel workout all the time. And the heels gave us confidence. The heels, what are the heels? He said, count it all joy when you enter divers temptations, when you get to a place where you're going through, you get to a place where it's hard. Because God is about to show you something. He's about to show you something about his character and about his nature that's going to give you confidence that when the next thing comes, that you can make it there too. Sometimes we've got to go through some heels. But the drills, this is like, 
David said, uh, in the word do I meditate both day and night. And when I meditate in his word, it would be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. He's saying, look, it was a drill. The word of God just became a part of who I was. Drilling the word of God, staying in the word of God, and a part of what you do. There's hills, there's drills, but there's thrills. He says, uh, if you delight yourself in the Lord, Jerry, he's going to give you the desires of your heart. So every once in a while, God will give you that desire. God will show you his glory. And sometimes you can go from glory to glory. Sometimes you think it's so sweet, something's coming. Oh, my goodness, something's coming. It's been so good. No, you can go from glory to glory in the God that you serve. Amen? Confidence. So he said, look, he says, therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the works of the Lord because you know that your labor is not in vain. Keep running with confidence. John 16, 33, he said, look, I told you all this, Jesus said, so that you may have peace in me. Here on earth you will have many trials and sorrows, but take heart. Somebody needs to hear this. Take heart. He says, because I have overcome the world. We can run with confidence because we're not just a victim. We a victor. There's some things that's going to happen to our lives, and it's going to be hard. But we've overcome because of Jesus. Can somebody say amen? We run, we live, we move based upon who is our champion. The Lord will march out like a champion, Isaiah says. Who's your champion? Who's your overcomer? Who's your conqueror? He says in Hebrews 12, he says, keep your eyes on the author and the finisher of your faith. Keep your eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates perfect, our perfect faith. Who is your champion? God says to all of us today, when Jesus called together his 12 disciples, he gave them power and authority to cast out all demons, to heal all diseases. Who is your champion? Do you know the authority that we have, that we can speak some things and change the situation? Do you know who we are and who we belong to? The champion who overcame death? He's undefeated. Giants fall down when he stands undefeated. That's the kind of God that we serve. All right. Here's the close. Joshua 6. God told Joshua, he said, I'm giving you Jericho. I'm going to give it to you. Jericho is closed up. Nothing getting in, nothing coming out. But God says, I'm giving Jericho to you. It's king and it's warriors. God said to Joshua, he said, I don't know, before I get to that, I believe God is giving us this neighborhood, giving us this city, giving us this nation. God, for the people of God, I believe God is saying, I'm, I'm in control. God says, I'm the champion. Nothing is too hard for me. After he told that to Joshua, he told him, he said, listen, tell the people, pick up the Ark of the Covenant. And he said, put seven priests that goes and walks ahead of the covenant. Put some mighty warriors on one side, and on the back side, put some more mighty warriors. And you walk around Jericho seven times. And at the end of one day when you walk around, camp at night, come back and do it again. Do it, do it seven times. But on the seventh time, on that day, Walk around seven times. Have the priests and have the folks carry a ram, trumpet. He said, when you finish that last one seven times, tell them blow that trumpet and shout. And when you shout, the walls of Jericho will come crashing down. Do you know the champion that we serve? It happened just the way he said it would happen. And I don't know when, but God be praised. He's got a timing, and me and Pastor John are going to talk this through, and all of the leadership. But we're walking around this neighborhood. We're walking around this area. And I just believe all the walls of oppression, all the walls of depression, all the walls of poverty, all the walls of homelessness, all the walls that stand between unity and division, all those walls got to come down. And I don't know, maybe you're here, you're not going to be able to walk, but you can shout. But I'm saying we don't have to wait till that time. We can shout right now. Say, yeah. Glory, hallelujah. Listen, if you want to get the Lord's attention and shout right now, can you say, yeah?
Say yeah. yeah. Glory. Hallelujah. Listen, he is our champion. And when he stands, nothing can defeat him. I'm going to ask that you stand. We're done. Amen. Paul says, look, I finished my course. I ran my race. I'm trying to tell somebody, stay the course. Rely on your champion. He's undefeated. Can you say amen? Hey, thank you so much for joining us today. Listen, if you uh, feel like you would like someone to pray with you or you want to reach out to us, please go ahead and check out the email address. We would love to hear from you. And as far as the rest of this day and this week, be blessed and know that God is for you. Take care.